Hi, I'm Scott, this is my buddy Hubie, and today we're going to be talking about snaps. Actually, I'm going to be doing all the talking, and Hubie here is just going to be standing and looking heroic. Anyway, it's a common topic that pops up about snaps and capes in regards to how many uh, snaps are there, uh, the placement of them, and even the functionality of why do we even bother having snaps with the cape uh, anyway. Let me address that one first. I think the foremost thing about the snaps on the cape is to keep the cape perfectly uh, centered and steady across the shoulders at all times, whether you're fighting or shaking a kid's hand. Nothing worse than really leaning over to shake someone's hand and uh, the cape flopping in front of you and looking more like a bib. Really ruins the effect. The other practical end of the snaps is actually to also help relieve the clasp or the weight of the cape from having the clasp press up against your neck. These capes are pretty heavy and uh, if you just went by the, just the, the sheer gravity they would just hang off the back and the clasp would just be pressing against your neck and feel like it's choking you. The snaps help uh, relieve that. It helps kind of hold the cape up. So there's uh, some snaps that help strategically uh, do that very thing. That way you can go with much heavier material on the cape so that not so it uh, flows and drapes beautifully adam actually had a couple different capes the one that they referred to as the hero cape was the ones that he would use for uh close-ups that would be like interior such as the bat cave and uh commissioner gordon's office so when he had to have that cape that just looked you know 110 percent it was the hero cape and it weighed about three times more than the cape he would have whether he was climbing up the bat wall or any of the stunt scenes or a lot of the exterior shots. By the way, another thing to really kind of keep in mind about snaps, one size does not fit all. As a matter of fact, one size only fits one. It's very much an individual tailored thing. So what lines up for you, it's not gonna line up for the next guy. So if someone's making your cape cross country, have them leave the snaps off. Have them send you the snaps so you have the proper size and have a local tailor or seamstress uh, do it for you in case you're not too uh, handy with the needle and thread and just end up stabbing yourself way too much. Save yourself on bandages. And doesn't mess up the satin either. There's going to be a total of seven snaps complete. There's going to be two on the shoulder, two on the lower back. That's two of the ones that kind of help relieve the, uh, the weight of the cape and the neck. And then there's going to be one at the back base of the neck attached to the cowl. And uh, then there's gonna be two more on the cape that help with the fold of the cape to where it sits on that shoulder perfectly. Just a little side note here about uh, Hubie here. He doesn't actually have any snaps on him because, uh, well, he doesn't move around and that's my cape. So once again, as I was saying about one size doesn't fit all, it's an individual tailored thing. My, my placement wouldn't line up on him and vice versa. So since he doesn't move around, I left the sna snaps off of uh, his tunic. Uh, but these are his own, uh, his own tights because whereas uh, I have to put the cowl and the cape on when I run off to uh, be heroic, he isn't left in the room in a complete state of undress. I mean, he's got to retain his dignity somehow. Anyway, a couple things to point out about a bat cape is that a proper Adam West style cape should come right down the middle when it's uh, undone. One of the things that uh, to keep in mind is that the seam line should be going perfectly across your uh, shoulder and just right on the edge of your shoulder, right to the edge of the tunic, right, right before the seam, you should have a snap right there and snap on the cape it should go right there, like so. Then, pull that over, should be the same on the other side. The next part I want to show you is actually the snaps that go in the lower part of the uh, back. But first, let me show you the inside of the cape here. Anyway, what you should be able to see right here is the inside of the cape. This snap here representing the one that's on the uh, goes on the back of the cowl and the two lower ones are the ones that go on the lower part of the back now if you be here uh, 
show you that in a second here. Excuse me. Okay, so you're going to need two snaps on the lower back to help ease the weight of the cape off of your neck. And those snaps would go right here. Or at least let me move out of the way to the miracle of computers. Nice. Also, might be a little hard to see here with the camera, but right up here is the snap on the bottom of the cowl to attach to the uh, back of the cape. Okay, so some of you still want to see the snaps actually on the tunic. Not a problem, I can deliver. Here's the tunic. And here's the back of it with the snaps along the back of the tunic like so. Now who would have thought after going putting those special effects in there and the graphics that you would actually need to see the real thing. But I know better because I know you costume fans out there and I deliver because I'm pulling for you. Anyway, there's more. Let's go. Okay, here's the more tricky part of the bunch. This is where we're actually going to try to get the snaps on the back of the cape. They're going to snap to part of the front of the cape fold over and create this perfect fold across the shoulders. This is the probably the most tailored one of the bunch and is really a fitting type thing and really kind of uh, really makes or breaks that, that cape looking just perfect. Anyway, the snaps I have on my cape aren't going to line up with Hubie as I said before, so we're going to treat this as if we were doing a fitting on Hubie here. Let's see if this works, okay? Anyway, you have the cape fully down on front snapped in place on the shoulder, then you fold it over back once like that to where you get this really nice angle coming across the uh, shoulder. Then you fold the cape where this edge comes back about halfway. Okay, so you got this fold here got this fold right here and with that angle going across the shoulder like that okay so where's the snap come into play you folded it back over back in front of in front of itself now the snap should be right where this fold meets with the back of the cape so should have a snap right there and then right along this fold right here on the edge right on the edge of the fold is the other snap that way the fold doesn't pull away. That way that halfway fold sits right in place every time. When you start seeing the series, whenever they put it on a DVD, you see the back shots of them, you can't help but notice those snaps every time after that. So, you should have the snap on the shoulder. So if you were putting your cape on, you have a clasp, you would snap to the shoulder, you would snap to the back, of the cowl. By the way, the snap on the back of the cowl also helps prevent this effect from happening. Keeps it all nice and tucked in, helps ease the weight of the cape off the clasp as we said before. So snap on the back, snap on the shoulders, then the snap of the sh back part of the cape, and then these snaps that we go into the lower back. Anyway, that's basically how it looks on that one. <laughs> you the big guy. Okay, well, there you have it. Capes, snaps, and you. Until next time, I'm Scott Sebring. It's my buddy Hubie. Do good things. And, uh, just one second. Yes, Commissioner. Oh, sorry, Wally. It's, it's, it's habit. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, gotta wear the suit too, huh? Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll a little bit short notice, but uh, you know, I'll be on my way. Okay, bye. Um. Anyway, um, uh, Gibby, gonna be needing that. Um... Um.